Hi, I'm Ryan Cook. This video will take you through the steps of deploying MongoDB in a federated OpenShift environment. The link below contains a readme as well as some of the required files. Let's get started. The first step is to create the federated Mongo project in the OpenShift UI. The next step is to use the operator hub to deploy the federation operator. Ensure the namespace is Federated Mongo and click subscribe. At the command line, we will see that files were created using the self install method for OpenShift 4. There are three clusters East 1, East 2, and West 2. Admin is the default value for the context in each of the three kube config files. This needs to be changed to reflect the three different environments. Now that the value of context is unique among all three kubeconfig files, we will export them as a variable kubeconfig. We will flatten all of the config files into a single file containing information about all three clusters. We will export the value of kubeconfig again using the newly flattened file. The context of East1 will be used in the subsequent steps. The kubefed2 binary will be downloaded and placed in the bin directory of the current user. Verify the binary is working by checking the version of kubefed2. The version currently being used by this demonstration is version 0.0.8. .0 Before proceeding, we must verify the Federation operator is successfully installed. Using kubefed2, we will establish the first federated cluster in East1. It is important to note that East1 is a member and also the host cluster. The federated clusters will be added to the federated Mongo namespace. As you can see, the cluster has successfully been added. The next step is to add the East2 cluster. The cluster context of East2 is defined to join the host cluster of East1. The last step will be to define the cluster context of West2 to join the host cluster of East1. The next step is to enable specific federation types within the federated Mongo namespace. These types can enable the use of deployments, service accounts, and persistent storage within the federated namespace. Before doing any application deployment, it is important to see that the federated clusters in the federated Mongo namespace are in the ready state. We will be using SSL for our MongoDB cluster members. Using Cloudflare's SSL tools will allow us to quickly create a CA and sign certificates to be used by the deployment. Moving to a demo directory, we will create the three JSON files defined in the readme. Specific values such as service name, 
FQDNs of the Mongo members which will be added to the OpenShift routers, as well as the names in which the cluster members will identify as, must be defined as these items will be used during the certificate creation process. Using the Cloudflare SSL tools, a CA will be generated as well as MongoDB certs. We will combine the MongoDB key and cert, as those will be used as a federated secret for the federated deployment. If the Federation Dev repository has not already been cloned, take the time and clone the repository. We will next be modifying the YAML files within the repository and then deploying the Mongo application. We need to populate the values of the Federated Secret to reflect the certificates that were previously generated. Ensure the paths to the Mongo PAM and the CA are correct before performing the steps. In the Federated Deployment YAML, the environment variables must be populated containing first the FQDN of the primary node, then we also must provide the FQDN values of all of the replica members. Let's take a look at one of the YAML files. It is important to note that the value of cluster name references all the Federated clusters that were defined in previous steps. This means resources will be created on those clusters. The cluster name values are the same for all of the YAML files in this directory. The Federated Secret, Federated Service, Federated Persistent Volume Claim, and the Federated Deployment will now all be created. We must now create the OpenShift routes, which will be used by the MongoDB service within each of the federated clusters. Note how the command stays roughly the same, the only item that changes is the context. Verify that the Mongo deployment in each of the clusters is in a ready state. Let's label and identify the primary MongoDB pod. This labeling lets MongoDB know what the primary member is and what members are the secondary members. Rather than waiting the entire 30 seconds for the sleep command to finish, I will now cut the video to when the command had completed. Now it is time to get the status of the replica set. As you see, the deployment in West 2 is labeled as secondary, as well as the deployment in East 2. The deployment in East 1 is labeled as the primary, so it is the primary MongoDB master. This concludes the deployment of the MongoDB application using Federation. 
This database cluster can be used with the Pac-Man application in the screenshot above. Thank you for your time.